Hi everyone and welcome to Triple M Adventures with Bill. This is a video of the Volatex RC X-Pilot AX601. It's this one, this is only the box for it, but I will show you a close up. Uh, we'll put a picture up here of it so you can see it. Um, it comes with one programming switch, uh, status LEDs, three game pots, and four servo uh, connections, which are for your aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. But I bypassed the throttle, and in the end, I bypassed the rudder, which I will go into later on in the video. It comes with uh, a wiring harness, which when it's together is actually quite stiff. So I separated all of them into separate pieces. So it was easier to deal with. Um, the stabilization system can run on S bus. It only needs one ground and one live when you're wiring this up. So you will take um, a live and a ground from your receiver and then all the other channels are just connected by one wire. You only need the signal coming from the receiver to the uh, flight stabilization system. Now let's take a closer look at the AX601. Okay, we're gonna go down to the pins first. Now you've got two sets of pins and there are 12 pins on each side. To the left, this is where the first set of pins is the aileron, then it's elevator and throttle and rudder. These go to your servos. On the opposite side, your top pin is going to be S bus. Now I wasn't using S bus, so then the next one next to that, or pin two, would be throttle, pin three, aileron, and pin four is elevator. Then down the bottom pins over here, so the first two pins of the bottom lines, you put your live and your ground, and then the rudder will go next to, go to this pin here. And the next pin, which is this purple one, is the one that goes to your switch so that you can switch modes. We then have the setting button where you, you set and calibrate. We've then got the three pots for doing the gains. Now let me show you the stabilizer in action and the problems that I was having and how I managed to solve them. Now we are in non-stabilized mode. Now I haven't got the wing on for filming purposes, but you can see everything's working fine. But when I switch over to the stabilized mode, you saw what happened then. Now if you were flying and then switched over to the stabilization, the uh, elevator's gonna move like that. Let me try it again. Okay, we're gonna switch back. You see, you get that. Well, that concerns me a bit. I wouldn't have thought it should be doing that. Okay, that's in stabilization mode. Now, if I use the rudder, you see the rudder doesn't go back because it's slowly making its way back. And so you have to center, you have to push the rudder again. So there, push, push the rudder back. So that is a serious problem with this. I'm not quite sure what's going on here because there aren't many adjustments you can make to this flight stabilization system. So what I did find out is that they say disable the rudder. Now the problem is when I disable the rudder and then bypass the stabilizer and put the rudder directly into the receiver, the stabilization system won't then initialize when you first plug in. So this is a little bit strange. But you see that's that's fine, but you see rudder, elevator and aileron are fine, they'll respond. Okay, turn off, it will neutralize again. Put it back on, everything's fine. Turn the rudder, rudder stays, which wouldn't be good if you're in mid flight. So I'm not quite, and you can hear it. You see, it's, it's got a mind of its own. Now, as you can see, it's good. Stabilization on. <laughs> you're gonna crash, you're gonna seriously crash. Look what's happening. Okay, go to stabilization two. The elevator will drop, but the rudder stays on until you. So that is completely, in my opinion, unusable. You can see it's got a mind of its own. The stabilization is working. You can see it's working in the correct sense now. It's correcting. But that rudder is definitely a problem. It's got a complete mind of its own. Now 
Now what I've done is bypass the rudder and put the rudder directly into the receiver. Now if I turn, plug my airplane in, now I'm getting a constant blue flashing light on the stabiliser because it won't initialise. That light needs to go off. This means it's trying to, you know, it's setting itself up, calibrating itself, and it just carries on flashing. And if I go, obviously my controls will work, but if I switch into stabilisation mode, nothing will happen. There you go, nothing. So that's not so, not so good. Now what I've done is I've done the wire from the receiver to the input of the stabilisation system, and then just plugged the rudder back in. And now that seems to be working. But let's... Yeah, stabilisation is working. Well, that's, that's interesting. So the rudder's working properly now when it's not plugged into the receiver. That's interesting. So the rudder's not working on the stick, but it's working in stabilisation. Is it working the right way? Turn. Right, I've overcome the problem. I'm just going to show you that everything is working fine now. Um, the default position of my switch is un, uh, not stabilised, so everything's working fine. I flip my switch to stabilisation. Nothing's crazy is going on with the elevator, uh, big problem with the rudder. And I'm not sure where I sit. You can see that it's correcting stabilizing so there we go I'll uh, switch over to the studio camera and explain to you exactly what I did to get this to work correctly but I would be happy flying this now and there you go you can see that I managed to get it to work but when I first tried to set up the stabilization and I plugged the battery into the aeroplane for some reason the motor started uh, started up luckily it only went for about a second or two seconds and then it stopped, even though I had set up my uh, safe throttle so that it couldn't accidentally arm, then it was disarmed. So that was a little bit, a bit scary. And then it also took ages and so many times to try and get it to calibrate because I kept going through the process. And what would happen is that the stabilization was working in reverse. Instead of getting up elevator, it was giving down or it was giving um, the opposite aileron that it needed to correct which was bizarre because within the instructions, you, instructions, you cannot see a way of changing that. Uh, it just said if, if the, um, you, your surfaces are moving in the correct position, change, your, change it on your radio, which is what we do normally. But when you did that, of course, then they would be in reverse. So I don't know what happened. I kept persevering for quite a, a couple of hours uh, last night and kept retrying the program at this. And eventually something happened that it worked. Now, I think... This is to do with the instructions. So I'm going to flash up on the screen the instructions where I think something is missing that explains to you how to do, to do this because of the way the wording is. But we'll flash it up on screen and I'll show you that. If you have a look at number five, you can see at the end there it says to enter tail type selection. And it says full stop and then it goes without a capital. We'll save settings after seven seconds. So I'm not sure if there's anything missing, Laura. That's just a bad interpretation from Chinese. I'm not sure. I went to the Banggood website and I downloaded the current manual and it's, I was still none the wiser to help to set this up. It wasn't a very useful tool, to be quite honest. Now, if we get back to the problems that I had, with regard to the rudder, I did the setup of this stabilisation system with everything connected and then it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work properly. So what I decided to do was, I'd already decided that the... Um, throttle won't be connected via the, it will be bypassed and go straight to the receiver. And then I did the same with the rudder. But as soon as I took the rudder off of the stabilization system, the system wouldn't initialize when you first turned it on. It just kept on blinking, the blue light kept on blinking saying that it can't initialize. So the way I overcome this was I set up channel six, which I had spare as another rudder and I allocated the, the stick, the rudder stick, to this channel. I then went to the original channel one, which was the rudder, and I gave it a zero value. So in other words, 
it you when the, the rudder stick because it's still connected to the same stick it would not move nothing would happen but then i then connected the signal of the channel one rudder to the stabilization system and then when i turned it on it would now initialize and of course i wasn't getting all the the jittering and the strange movements that i showed you in the video because it was the stabilization system causing that now because i bypassed it and the signal for the rudder was directly going to the rudder it couldn't cause any problems with that and now I'd isolated that problem from the system and it allowed it to, to work properly, as you can see in the video. The last thing I need to discuss with you is the mode switch. Now, mode one is normal flight, so there was no stabilization. Then you had two other modes. Now, the thing would throw a fit if it was in mode the second mode, so the switch in the second position. If you put it into the third position, everything would be okay. So to overcome this, I turned the three position switch into a two position switch. So in other words, uh, fully back is zero, fully forward is full throw. So there was nothing in between. So it would skip the, the middle mode and go for either be in non-flight, um, non-stabilization mode or stabilized mode, but the mode two. And that also helped solve this problem. So that's an important thing I need to tell you is that I did that. And then you can see from the video, everything was working okay. If you tried to set up the AX601 with the instructions, it just, in my case, it wouldn't work. It might work with other models, but for my, mine, because of the rudder, it just would not work. And I followed the instructions to the T. So that is a, a little bit of a, was a little bit of a problem for me. And that's what caused me such a long time to try and get it to connect. So if you wanted to buy one, if you follow these instructions, hopefully it will work out for you as well. In summary, would I buy another X-Pilot? I wouldn't. And the reason that I wouldn't buy it was because I lost confidence in it. The way it was operating, the way that you would try and set something up, you, it needs to do what it's meant to do. And because it completely messed up the control services, that was really worrying for me. If you're in mid-flight and then suddenly it starts dancing around and doing whatever it wants to, your, your precious model is going to fall out the sky and um, you know it could uh, damage property or could damage someone so that would put me off buying it i am going to fly it i am going to test it because i'm going to go to our local airfield which is a big uh, wide open area i think it is going to be okay but when you uh, when when you get a lack of confidence in something it's very difficult to get that back so that's why I'm saying no, I would, I personally wouldn't buy another one, but you can take a look at my video and take a look at what I've done and come to your own conclusion. Thanks for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below because I'd love to hear from you. And please share this video with your friends. And please consider becoming a Patreon of my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Bye for now. Bye bye.